Joining us now is Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal. Senator, thanks so much for your time tonight. The second impeachment trial of now former President Trump gets underway tomorrow. As you're well aware, you and your colleagues will be the jurors. Forty-five of those jurors voted that the trial is unconstitutional, including Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Now, McConnell has vowed, though, to weigh the evidence before casting his vote. Is it your expectation that Republican senators who may be on the fence will follow his lead? I have no idea what Republican senators are going to do. He said that the president provoked, that's his word, provoked that armed attack, a violent act of domestic terrorism to stop the balloting and potentially assassinate our colleagues, public officials, including the vice president of the United States. And if my Republican colleagues obey their oath and follow the facts and law, they'll vote to convict. Their cowardice, their spinelessness may prevent them from doing so. I'm hoping that they will look past this completely bogus constitutional argument. You don't have to look back 100 years. All you need to do is read the Constitution and obey the plain language. As one of their own lawyers, a very conservative lawyer, Charles Cooper, said in a Wall Street Journal opinion piece today. So I am hopeful, but by no means overconfident that the verdict will be to convict. Now, while both sides want this over to, this uh, process to the trial to be over quickly and witnesses would only delay the process, is there value, though, in hearing participants testify who have been charged as a result of their involvement at the Capitol, who say that they went because they were, in fact, listening to President Trump? Key question, Lindsay. And here's my personal view. As a former prosecutor, United States Attorney for Connecticut, and attorney general of my state for 20 years, I let the trial lawyers determine their own trial, how to present their evidence. And if the House managers, or for that matter, the defense lawyers, feel they need witnesses to present absolutely critical evidence, they should be permitted to do so. And I felt it in the last impeachment trial. I feel it equally so now that a day or so more of an impeachment trial is no great sacrifice. Nobody wants to move to the president's rescue plan more than I. The country's hurting, so is Connecticut. And we need that assistance for more vaccines and delivery of them, more aid for state and local governments, unemployment compensation, all of the critical parts of this big, bold program. But if it takes an extra day of trial, so be it. The Witnesses, if necessary, should be allowed to appear. It sounds like if you were a House manager, you would implore witnesses to testify. I think the most incriminating evidence here, Lindsay, is the president's own words, out of his own mouth. And that's why this trial is gonna be very heavily videotape evidence showing what the president said, how the crowd reacted, what they said about following his orders as you just presented, and that kind of evidence, recorded public airing of the president's guilty intent. He clearly, in the 77 days before this incident, was trying to reverse a lawful election. And this incident, an armed attack and act of domestic terrorism, was the last gasp of a violent effort to overthrow an election and potentially overthrow our democracy. By and large, Americans have, have seen and heard the video and the language that President Trump has used. Uh, is there any new evidence perhaps that's gonna be presented? There may well be. In fact, uh, including, I'm guessing, I have no inside information, what the president did as he watched this assault unfold. The fact that he, didn't even lift a finger when he knew that this mob was looking for his vice president to kill him. And maybe what he did to slow down the response, we don't know, of the National Guard and other law enforcement, there potentially is new evidence. And that's part of the drama of this trial. I am feeling personally, Lindsay, that this impeachment is as deeply consequential and weighty as the first one, even though Donald Trump is out of office, the principle of accountability is ever more important. 
And we spoke with your colleague, Senator Tim Kaine, last week, who had proposed an alternative to impeachment of censure if it becomes clear that there will not be 67 votes to convict. Do you think that Democrats will consider a censure and using the 14th Amendment to, to bar Trump from running for office once again? A censure under the 14th Amendment could be used as evidence if somebody tries to bar Donald Trump from running for office again. It might have some weight, but it wouldn't be dispositive, it wouldn't be decisive to a court. And so I think the effects of a censure are limited. I'm looking for a conviction. That's what's important here, a conviction on this impeachment that would, in fact, then lead to his being barred from office. And I am hopeful that will be the result. Do you think that the trial could affect the COVID relief negotiations, both from a timing perspective and in any chance of bipartisan cooperation after a likely contentious impeachment trial? I'm still hoping we'll have bipartisan cooperation on the COVID pandemic relief plan, the American Rescue Plan, which right now hopefully will be in the range of $2 billion. The Republicans have come forward with a proposal for $600 billion, one third of the amount that the president has in mind. I think Republicans have to close that gap and come to our level. The door is open to them. There's no price of admission. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.